Yesterday I found out, uh, lost a friend that I used to go to school with. I've known for a very long time. He passed away. And uh, of course I mourned, briefly mourned. I don't mourn very long. I mourn and, you know, because I have faith in God. But, uh, you know, every time I lose a friend, it's a reminder that this life is temporary, you know. And this individual was 28 years old. Uh, you know, it's a reminder that life is temporary and that you're either saved or you're not. You know, the afterlife to me is not a mystery. It's very clear and it's very real because of this right here. This word, I know this word, I'm in this word. New Testament, I'm in there, I'm in there, I'm in there. So I understand what the Bible says about spiritual death, spiritual life, eternal life in Christ, repentance, salvation, forgiveness, healing, deliverance, sanctification, the Holy Spirit, you know, all of these things. Because it's all in the Bible. And uh, I would encourage you to read the Bible for yourself, you know. I read New American Standard Bible. You know, I don't understand how any human being could not read the Bible. I mean, I don't care if you're atheist, whatever your religion is. I don't understand how any human being could not read the New Testament at least one time. Just read it. You know, I, I do not understand that. If nothing else, out of curiosity to see what it says. You know, everybody has an opinion about God. But uh, until you read the Bible, you don't know anything. You know, that's like me. I was ignorant. I didn't know nothing. I believed in God. That wasn't enough. I had to believe in Jesus Christ. You know, because you can't get to the Father but through the Son. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That is truth. And uh, you don't want to gamble with your soul. Don't gamble with your soul. Don't play with your soul. You know, and uh, this is the truth. The Word of God is very clear about salvation, about believing in Christ, confessing with your mouth Jesus as Lord. That's how you enter. That's how you, that's the beginning, okay? That's how you go from spiritual death to spiritual life as you get born again. You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's not religious. That's truth. It's a miracle that happens in you. One day, I was a drug addict, drug dealing, violent, angry, criminal. The next day, I accepted Christ. I was clean. I was a new man in Christ with a desire to love and to serve God instantly. Instantly, my nature changed as does anybody who receives Christ. Doesn't mean my soul, everything in my soul changed, my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, my physiology, my, you know, my memories and all of that, but my spirit went from death to life. Instantly, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things passed away, behold, all things have become new. Being, becoming a, a believer in Christ, born again Christian, means that your spirit, man, goes from death to life. I didn't understand, you know, as I, as I reminisced the other day about things I used to do in my lost life, I mean, I'm astounded that I, I just lived like God did not exist, like God was not real. I had no fear of God. I, have no, I had no respect for God. I had no acknowledgement of God. I mean, I prayed, but I didn't I just lived in ignorance, complete ignorance, and, and you know, so I can have compassion because I know what it is. I know what it's like. And because of grace, I'm saved. And you can only be saved by grace. Because of God's mercy, he saved me, you know? Religion didn't save me. Uh, church didn't save me. A pastor didn't save me. Reading this right here saved me. This is what saved me. All right? This. A hungry heart and the truth. My walk, my relationship with God began by reading the New Testament, by reading the Bible, getting to see what the Bible says about Jesus and putting my faith in Christ. So I just want to encourage you, you know, read the Bible, read the word. Listen, you're going to die one day. I'm going to die one day. I know when we die, we don't actually stop existing. Your spirit, man, leaves your body, okay? And the Bible says it is appointed for all to die once. And then after this comes judgment. Every single human is going to be judged. All right, and the only way you're going to be forgiven for your sins, and we are all sinners because we all fall short of the glory of God, the only way you're going to be forgiven for your sins is if you believe in Jesus Christ. The only justification before God, the creator of all things, 
is that you believe in his son, Jesus Christ. There's no other justification, okay? Bam, that's it. That's the entry point. Without Christ, you have no hope. You have no hope at all of salvation, of eternal life, of going to heaven. Okay, that's the word of God. That's the truth. So you can sit there and you can debate and you can this and that, but I can give you scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture on any subject you want to talk about. So, I mean, I, I heard from somebody once that ignorance is assuming something without doing your own research. Intelligence is doing your own research and basing your beliefs on that research. So be intelligent and do your own research and base your beliefs upon that research. Don't be ignorant and assume something because you heard it or you think it or it's your opinion. Do some research. This is your soul. I'm telling you. You know, I'm telling you the word of God. I don't care what people think. Listen, when I was in the world, I didn't care what people think. I did what I wanted to do all the time, 100% of the time. Nobody could tell me nothing. When I came to Jesus Christ, I didn't care what nobody think. I didn't care what all my old friends thought. I didn't care what nobody thought because I've always been a leader. It doesn't matter if nobody follows Jesus Christ. I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if nobody reads the word, prays in the spirit, fasts, worships, serves God, seeks to, to see the fullness of God in their life. I'm going to. That's my calling. I'm a disciple. That is what I'm called for. I was living for, I was a disciple of the devil, okay? I was on Satan's front line, and Jesus came into my life like he came into Apostle Paul's life, and he saved me, and he healed me, and he gave me a new identity. He gave me something to live for. He said, listen, none of these people love you, but I love you. None of these, all these, all these, these females you know, they don't love you, but I love you. All these dudes that you're chilling with that did they claim that they're loyal and they don't love you, but I love you. Not one of these people will lay their life down for you, but I laid my life down for you. To me, that was real. It didn't get no real. It didn't matter to me if nobody was following Christ. Okay? I didn't come to Christ because it was popular, because it was cool. I didn't look to the left and look to the right and worry about what other people thought or how they, how they felt. I made a decision based on what I read in the word and what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. I'm a sinner. I knew I was a sinner. I know that by grace I'm saved. I needed Jesus. My prayer to God was, God, I'm messed up. God, I'm messed up. I'm a mess. I don't even, I honestly don't even see how you can change me, how you can heal me. I have no idea, but God, if you can, you're God, so I'm sure you can. Lord, I'll give you my life. I have no life anyways. My life is, is headed to hell. I'm, I'm self-destructing. I'm destroying everybody in my life. I'm destroying myself. You know, so it was literally a lifeline for me. He said, here, I love you. You know, and I've seen friends die. I just lost another friend. I've seen friends die. I've seen friends go to prison. I've seen friends go to prison for life. I have friends that are not getting out, you know, that are in prison for life. I have friends that have been in prison for years and years and years. I have friends that are addicted to drugs right now, still the lifestyle I used to live. I have friends that are still doing the stuff I did 10 years ago, but Jesus is alive, okay? I don't wanna to get too long when the Jesus Christ is alive. I will keep making these videos, okay? I don't do this for anybody's approval. I don't do this to be seen by anybody. I do this because I'm obliged before God. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father who is in heaven. If you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father who is in heaven. I'm acknowledging that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. He is my healer. He is my provider. He is my redemption. He is my justification. He is my righteousness. He is my everything. Without Christ, I have nothing. I want you to know, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have nothing. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what kind of success you got. I don't care how you look. I don't care what you've done it does none of that matters okay whatever glory so-called glory you think you have it means nothing if you don't have christ because your looks will fade your bank account that'll soon be over this life you're not taking your bank account with you whatever worldly achievements you, you acquire if it's not heavenly if it's not eternally minded it's not going to do you any benefit in the life to come 
And the Bible says, set your mind on things above, not things on earth, for you have died. Your life is hidden with Christ and God. It says, build your riches in heaven, not on earth. Are you building your riches in heaven? Or are you building your riches on earth? Are you looking for approval from men? Are you looking approval for approval from God? Do you know who God is? Do you know who Jesus Christ is? Are you living your life in ignorance? Are you living your life with a knowledge of the word? Do you know this word? Do you know anything that is in this word? Because this word is all that matters. Matthew through Revelations, New Testament, read it. The New Covenant. Do you know anything that is in this word? Because if you haven't read this word, you need to get a word right now and you need to start reading it. Period. Go to BibleGateway.com, start reading it. Uh, God bless you. I pray for you in Jesus Christ's mighty name right now, Father. Whoever's watching, Lord, I take authority over the, I break the power of the devil in Jesus Christ's name. I have authority as a son of God. I take, I take authority over every, every principality, every power in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And I cancel the assignment of Satan against our life in Jesus Christ's mighty name. The fear, fear of what other people think. Fear, Lord, in the, in the name of Jesus, I break fear. I break addiction in the name of Jesus Christ. I break every stronghold in the name of Jesus Christ, a name that is above every name. I have authority in the name of Jesus. And I speak the name of Jesus into their life. I speak salvation into their life. I speak healing into their life. I speak deliverance into their life. I speak an intimate, personal relationship into their life. I speak surrender. I speak that they'll be on their knees weeping before the throne and that they'll see who you are, Jesus. That they'll see your beauty. That they'll see your glory. That the love of Christ, that they might know the love of Christ. Break, I break every power of the devil. And gee, devil, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to leave right now, devil. You're a, you're a liar, you're a deceiver, and you're a bully. And you pick on people that don't know no better. I know better, devil. You've been defeated. Jesus Christ defeated you, completely disarmed you and defeated you and rendered you powerless. In Jesus Christ's name, I command you to cease and to desist in all your operations against everybody's life that is watching this video. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I pray, amen. God bless you. Receive Jesus. Receive Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Confess him with your, with your mouth and believe him in your heart and give him your life. It doesn't stop there. Don't listen to what these, these preachers are preaching you because they're not preaching to you the word of God. Don't listen to what they tell you. It doesn't stop there. You need to surrender. You need to give him your heart. You need to give him your life. Okay, the wages of sin is death. Don't think because you said a prayer that you have a license to do whatever you want for the rest of your life and you're going to go to heaven. Don't be deceived. Don't believe the devil's lie. Don't die and then end up in hell and then go before Christ. And then, and then he's the, the word of God says that many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not do many miracles in your name? And I'll say to them, depart from me, for I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. That word new means no intimately and personally like a man in a marriage covenant relationship knows his wife. It means a deep, intimate, personal relationship. Jesus said, I never knew you. We never had intimacy. We never, we never had heart to heart. We were never intimate. You, you, were, you were living, you were practicing sin and you were in ministry, you were doing ministry. So let that convict you. I let the word of God penetrate me. I let it convict me. The word of God is continuously cutting me and convicting me and changing me in Jesus Christ's name. We have to completely, totally surrender. It's a lifelong journey. Give your life to Christ, be blessed. And uh, don't be deceived because one of the biggest lies the devil puts out there is, uh, you know, everybody that dies is in a better place. That's a lie from heaven.